Welcome to this tutorial today that I'm going to be doing with you on fibrous joints. Over the last few videos we have discussed joints and taken a deeper look into synovial joints, but what about our fibrous joints? Well, fibrous joints within the body are classified by a joint that is created by fibrous tissue, uh, namely dense connective tissue. There will also be no cavity, like we see with our synovial joints, and the movement allowed by this type of joint is very limited and is determined by the length of the connective tissue fibers. So we have a mixture of amphiarthroses, being able to move just a little bit, and synarthroses, uh, predominating actually, and they cannot move at all. So there we have our mix of amphiarthroses and synarthroses. Now of our fibrous joints, we can divide them into three groups. And we're going to divide them into sutures, which we'll find in the skull, a syndesmosis, or a gomphosis. Now what we're going to do quickly here is just briefly describe how these uh, three types of fibrous joints differ. So if we start with our sutures, the first thing we will note is that they are only found within the skull. And the term uh, suture refers to it appearing almost like a seam between the bones. They consist of only very, very short connective tissue fibers that connect to the periosteum of the bones. Now these sutures allow for there to be bone growth within the skull at an early age. And we'll just show here that they're almost forming a seam between those bones of the skull. And just on this full drawing of the skull here, we can see all these sutures. Now, later in life, these sutures actually ossify becoming solid bone, and at this point they're more accurately known as synostoses. Now if you get confused between those two terms, just remember that ost or osteo means bone, so that's not referring to a ligament. Moving on to our syndesmosis, we will first note that these joints are connected exclusively by ligaments, with the term syndesmos meaning ligament. The fibers in this type of fibrous joint are always longer than in sutures, but the actual length can still vary quite significantly. Uh, as we can see here with the uh, distal tibia and uh, fibia connecting, the fibers are relatively long, but still only limited movement is allowed. Now functionally, we would usually call this a synarthrosis, but because of the slight movement, some authorities defined it as an amphiarthrotic joint. Now, however, there are very limited exceptions to this, such as the interosseous membranes that connect our ulna and radius along their length, resulting in a diarthrotic joint. Now our last and most simply defined fibrous joint is a gomphosis. The gomphosis joint refers to a peg in socket type attachment that we will only find in the mouth where teeth are attaching to the facial bones. This connection is made by the periodontal ligaments and you can think of these types of joints as if the teeth were uh, hammered into place. So I've just drawn up here uh, those periodontal ligaments attaching that tooth to uh, the facial bones, only found within the mouth. And I'll just draw up here quickly as well. It's as if they were uh, hammered into their sockets. So hammered into place. Now this covers all of the uh, different types of fibrous joints that we'll find within the body. In our next video, we will look at the uh, cartilaginous joints and that will cover all of our joints. I hope this has been helpful to you and as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.